Welcome to the EU news on September 22nd, 2021. And today we start in Warsaw, in Poland. In the dispute over the Polish Turo lignite mining on the border with Saxony and the Czech Republic, the European Court of Justice, the ECJ, has sentenced Poland to pay a fine. Despite an interim ECJ order from May, Warsaw did not stop lignite mining, according to an order from ECJ Vice President Rosario Silva de la Puerta. It was clear that Poland has not complied with the interim order, it said. Therefore, from now on, Poland will have to pay a fine of 500,000 euros to the EU budget for every day it does not comply with the order. However, the Polish government immediately made it clear that it would not close the mine. Turov is an important employer in the region and important for electricity production. The Deputy Minister of Justice, Marcin Romanowski, tweeted, You won't get a cent. So that's what they think about law. The decision is based on an application by the neighboring country of the Czech Republic, which had previously sued Poland before the ECJ. The country complains that the license for the open pit has been extended without the required environmental impact assessment. The Polish Ministry of the Environment extended the operating permit for the open pit mine by six years in March 2020. In December, the EU Commission criticized Poland for underestimating the environmental impact and misinformation of its neighbors, while the government in Prague also fears that the water table will fall. Residents of the neighboring Czech border region also complained about annoyance from noise and dust. The interim order of the ECJ in May followed these arguments. However, the Polish government stuck to coal mining. Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki justified this by saying that the country's energy security must be guaranteed. In June, the Czech Republic therefore applied to the EU budget for a daily fine of 5 million euros. Poland in turn applied for the temporary injunction from May to be lifted, but the ECJ vice president has now rejected the Polish application. At the same time, she imposed a fine of 500,000 euros until Poland followed the interim order. A final judgment in the case will be made by the ECJ at a later date. According to the Polish news agency PAP, the spokesman for the Polish government, Piotr Müller said, the government would not close the tour of open cast mine. The fine is disproportionate to the situation and is not justified, he said. The Polish Minister for Climate and uh, Environment, Michal Kurtika, referred to very intensive uh, discussions about the solutions with the Czech Republic. Observers in Prague no longer expect an agreement before the parliamentary elections in early October and the formation of a new government. The Czech Environment Minister Richard Brabec praised the imposition of the fine as a motivation for Poland to stop coal mining in Turov. And now let's go to Prague, to the Czech Republic. The Czech Republic has started booster vaccinations against the coronavirus. The first people received their third injection on Monday. The prerequisite is that the last vaccination was more than eight months ago. The Ministry of Health in Prague recommends the so-called booster vaccinations expressly for seniors over 60, members of risk groups as well as health and care staff. For everyone else, it's up to their own will, said Health Minister Adam Wojtek. Anyone who is eligible receives an SMS notification. On the first day, there were almost 8,000 people with health insurance. By the end of the year, it should be a million. Some vaccination centers do not require prior registration. Only vaccines from BioNTech, Pfizer and Moderna are used for the booster. In the Czech Republic, almost 5.9 million people are now fully vaccinated against the coronavirus. That is more than half of the 10.7 inhabitants of the EU member state. And now let's go to another one. Let's go to Vienna in Austria. In Austria, a 3G certificate will be required for skiing in the coming uh, winter season. Cable cars, gondolas and sky huts may only be used she huts may only be used by those who have been vaccinated, recovered or tested, said Tourism Minister Elisabeth Köstinger from the ÖVP on Monday. When using the cable cars, an FFP2 mask is required. après should be possible under strict conditions, 
similar to those for nighttime gastronomy. The basis for this is a three-step plan recently established by the government, which is based on the utilization of the intensive care units. This means that as soon as more than 300 intensive care beds are occupied, nightclubs and then après bars can only be visited by vaccinated or convalescent people with the so-called 2G rule. And now let's go to Brussels and Belgium. Australia's submarine deal with the US angered France. Now EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen has taken a clear position on that one. France feels snubbed by the USA, Australia and Great Britain. At the end of last week, the three countries announced the establishment of a new security alliance for the Indo-Pacific called AUKUS. For me, it always sounds like AUKUS. Not only does Paris see its interest in the region affected by this, Australia also broke a multi-billion dollar submarine deal with France and would now like to purchase American nuclear submarines. In this dispute, EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen has now clearly stood on the side of France and criticized the treatment of the country by the AUKUS members with quite clear words. In an interview with a U US television broadcaster CNN, when asked whether relations in the region would deteriorate, she replied, there are many unanswered questions that need to be answered. One of our member states was treated in a way that is unacceptable, said von der Leyen, and she said, we want to know what happened and why. We have to clarify that first before we can continue as usual. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson also commented on the subject on his US trip, according to Reuters news agency. Britain's relationship with France was indestructible, said Johnson, when asked whether the new AUKUS partnership had damaged relations with France. I think Britain and France have a very important and indestructible relationship, he said to reporters in New York, and he said, and of course, we will talk to all of our friends about how the AUKUS pact works so that it does not exclude, divide, and it really doesn't have to be like that. Indestructible? Well, let's go to Paris and France. French Defense Minister Florence Barly cancelled a meeting with her British colleague Ben Wallace because of the dispute over the failed sale of French submarines to Australia. The meeting was postponed to a later date, said the co-chair of the Franco-British Council, Peter Ricketts, um, as the BBC and the Guardian newspaper reported on Monday. Pardy was to travel to London as part of a meeting of the organization, and high-ranking military officials were also to take part in the deliberations of the two largest military powers in Western Europe. As part of a three-way pact with the United States and Great Britain, as I said, Australia had agreed to build nuclear-powered submarines and cancelled a 56 billion euro contract with France they signed in 2016. And British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, as you heard, meanwhile tried to calm France down. The underlying new military alliance between his country and Australia and the US in the Indo-Pacific was nothing to worry about especially not our French friends. Hey, they, what, they can buy a lot for that one, especially when Johnson said this. And his words that they have a very friendly relationship of the utmost importance, what he said on the flight to the UN General Assembly. Who will believe anything he says? Not since he started. But let's get back to Brussels and Belgium. Following International Democracy Week 2021, the European Union has announced five measures with a budget of 119.5 million euros to build strong European support for democracy and human rights around the world in 2021. The EU is firmly committed to protecting and empowering the individual, building resilient, inclusive and democratic societies and promoting a global system for human rights and democracy. It will not stand idly by the building of democracy and the increase in human rights violations, inequality, intolerance, prejudice and discrimination. With the announced measures, the EU will support civil society organizations, democracy activists and human rights defenders in 116 countries, with special attention paid to women and youth. 
They will also help foster political cooperation at the highest levels for the global defense of democracy. The funds will contribute to the implementation of the EU Action Plan on Human Rights and Democracy for 2020 to 2024 and the country plans under the EU Action Plan for Gender Equality 3. It also provides much needed support to the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, the OHCHR. Um, the 5 million euro contribution to the Alliance for Democracy promotion will promote data collection and analysis and strengthen cooperation between the EU and its member states in the field of democracy and human rights. The EU will support the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, the human rights pillar of the United Nations mandate, with 4.8 million euros for its 2021 budget. Around 100.8 million euros will be used to support civil society organizations, democracy activists and human rights defenders in the 116 partner countries I talked about earlier. These funds will come to the country-specific allocations under the new Neighborhood Development and International Cooperation Instrument, Europe in the World, the NDICI, and will be managed by the EU delegations. The 4 million euros from the EU Human Rights Crisis Facility will continue to provide rapid and confidential support to civil society organizations in some of the most difficult, dangerous and unpredictable political situations where human rights and fundamental freedoms are most at risk and under threat. The Global Campus of Human Rights, a unique network of 100 universities, will receive 4.9 million euros in support for the academ uh, academic year 2021-2022. The Global Campus was established by the EU to promote regional and global cooperation in human rights education through seven regional master's programs. And talking about human rights and stuff, let's go to Moscow in Russia. Russian President Vladimir Putin has issued another decree extending the embargo against fruit from Germany and dozens of other countries by one year until December 31st in 2022. It was a reaction to the anti-Russian sanctions of the EU and other countries, it said in the published decree. The import ban on dairy products, meat, fruit and vegetables from the EU, which was first imposed in August 2014, was a reaction to the punitive measures taken by the West against Russia in the wake of the conflict in Ukraine. It is about the protection of the national interests of Russia, it says in the decree of the president. Putin had repeatedly stated that the embargo also helped to improve self-sufficiency in the dairy industry, for example, so as to be less dependent on imports. Yeah, but did it work? In addition to the EU, the embargo also affects the USA, Australia, Canada and Ukraine. Despite the import ban, many products from the West come to Russia indirectly and via smuggling. Cheeses from France and Italy, for example, are in great demand. Russia has already had tons of food destroyed as a deterrent to black market trade. Russian consumers, however, complain about the high prices and the sometimes inferior quality of local food. According to experts, the elimination of foreign competition leads to the formation of monopolies and the prices of Russian food to rise. Congratulations, Putin. But now let's go to Washington and the USA. The USA will relax the entry bans imposed because of the corona pandemic for Europeans, among others. Fully vaccinated foreigners should be allowed to re-enter from the beginning of November, announced the Corona Coordinator of the White House, Jeffrey Zients. According to Zients, travelers must show proof of vaccination and a negative test result before boarding. The latter must be a maximum of three days ago. According to the announcement, the airlines are to keep passenger contact infos for 30 days, so that they can be notified of any corona cases. The USA will relax the entry bans imposed because of the corona pandemic for Europeans, among others, as I said. That's why it is in this video at all. Fully vaccinated foreigners should be allowed to re-enter from the beginning of uh, November. And that is quite a good thing. We in the EU 
are quite far with the vaccination anyway uh, in, in most of the member states. And um, that means that uh, the risk is lower anyway. Of course, vaccinated people can be infected, but it's, that is not the real point. The point is, what does it do to our intensive care units? And so the same will be with the um, USA. Exact guidelines on how this follow-up should take place will be announced at a later date, said White House spokeswoman uh, Yen Jen Psaki. Um, the same applies to the question of which vaccines are recognized by the USA and how a vaccination has to be proven. So far, only three vaccines have been approved in the USA. The preparations from BioNTech Pfizer, Moderna and Johnson & Johnson. So, no AstraZeneca. Under the then President Donald Trump, the USA had restricted entry for citizens of the EU, Great Britain, China and Iran in March 2020. Other countries were added later, including Brazil and India. Shortly before the end of his term in office, Trump announced the end of the entry ban, but the new administration of um, US President Joe Biden refused to implement a corresponding order and instead expanded security measures. Exceptions to the US entry ban apply to students, journalists and business people, among others. The EU lifted its entry restrictions for US citizens in June and urged the US government to follow suit. In August, the US government announced it was developing an approach that would allow fully vaccinated foreign nationals to re-enter the country. There will be limited exceptions, they said. The EU reacted with relief to the impending easing. This is a long-awaited step for separated families and friends and good news for business, said the EU Commission. And uh, EU Industry Commissioner Thierry Breton spoke of a logical decision given the success of our vaccination campaign. And we have to get back to Brussels one more time as well. As announced by President Ursula von der Leyen in her State of the Union address, the Commission made its first recommendation to improve the safety of journalists and other media professionals. Journalists have been the target of attacks more and more frequently in recent years. In the most tragic cases, journalists have even been murdered. I remember a case from the Netherlands. The COVID-19 crisis has made their job even more difficult with lower incomes, especially for freelancers, and limited access to venues. To reverse this trend, the Commission is adopting measures to be taken by member states to improve the safety of journalists, both offline and online. Among other things, the recommendation calls for the establishment of independent national support services, including emergency services, legal advice, psychological support and shelters for journalists and other media professionals exposed to threats. It also calls for better protection for journalists during demonstrations, more online security and special support for female journalists. Vice President of the Commission for Values and Transparency, Vera Jourova said, no journalist should be injured or killed because of his work. We have to support and protect the journalists. They are indispensable for democracy. The pandemic has shown more than ever the central role journalists play in keeping us informed and that the authorities urgently need to do more to protect them. Today we call on member states to act decisively to make the EU a safer place for journalists. And I'll see you in my next video. Bis gleich.